Section 3. Making your .NET Core application data-driven and robust. In this section, we will be concentrating on getting NukeTime up and running with a Postgres database inside a container, something it requires to run. Once this is done, we will then move on to looking into port configuration with Fukestral and ASP.NET Core applications. Finally, we will run NukeTime with a mounted volume to demonstrate how to make HTML template files persist so that stopping and running a new container will continue to use the volume and importantly, tying this into ASP.NET Core applications. Video 3.1 Running a database and linking containers Welcome to the first video of the third section. In this video, we will concentrate on running a Postgres database as the backing store for NukeTime. NukeTime has got this capability out of the box, and we will see how we can connect two containers, an ASP.NET Core application and a database via a single Docker network. We will do this using Docker Compose to create the network for us. NukeTime uses Postgres to store the uptime check data and the results of these checks. The database you use is configured as a connection string property in the application settings, which you can configure via an environmental variable, as we saw in the previous video section. The simplest way we can get a Postgres database working in a development environment is to launch a Postgres database inside a Docker container. This saves time installing Postgres on your Windows desktop, downloading the installer, and having an unnecessary Windows service running in the background. You can also bring it up and tear it down whenever you need a brand new empty database. You can easily run the Postgres database container when you need it, and stop it when you don't. It's not just Postgres either, you can do this with MySQL, MongoDB and even SQL Server on Linux now too. There is some debate about whether running a database inside a container is a good idea in regards to stability, at least in a production environment, particularly when Azure, Google and Amazon all offer Postgres servers as a service, and on dedicated hardware. But for our needs on a development desktop, running inside a container is fine. One benefit of running Postgres inside a container is that your NoopTime ASP.NET Core container can simply use the name of your Postgres container in its connection string as a pseudo DNS entry. For example, if you named your Postgres container Snowflake, using docker run minus minus name Snowflake, you could then reference it in your connection string. Docker depreciated the minus minus link functionality that allowed you to link containers together earlier in 2017. The new way of linking containers is to create your own custom Docker network. This essentially tells Docker that all containers running on this network should be linked by name. Doing this manually is a fair amount of work on the command line. Luckily Docker Compose, which we saw in previous videos, makes this a lot easier. In fact, by default, it creates all containers that you group together as a service on the same new custom network. To verify this, let's try changing the name of the container in the docker compose YML file, and then change the connection string. In this video, we saw how to link containers together in Docker with a custom network that docker compose creates for you automatically, saving time when you're developing. There are a number of orchestration tools that can do this for you. AWS ECS, Swarm, Kubernetes, which we'll look at in a later video.